Welcome to the AHA Show, where we hope to provide abundantly helpful advice through real stories of inspiration and achievement. Hi, I'm Alex Tu, and this is my gorgeous co-host, Jennifer Berman. Welcome to the AHA Show, where we hope to provide abundantly helpful advice through real stories of inspiration and achievement. And today we have with us my dear friend, Claude Sutton Jr., AKA Cloudy Boy. How you doing, how you doing? <laughs> Claude, it's so awesome having you on set with it's us today. It's an honor today. to be here. Oh my goodness. Uh, there's, where, where do I start with this man? Claude is actually a professional boxer, an undefeated yes. professional boxer, by yes. the way. So yes. to have him sitting on this couch with me and Jennifer is He's the featherweight undefeated boxer. Yes, so with yes, that, yes, yes. Claude, you got to let our audience know what's your background and what's your story. I okay. know what it is, so I can't wait for everybody else to get to know you. Okay. Well, yes. So um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Uh -huh. I uh, grew up in Brooklyn, New York, raised by my grandmother, a single grandmother. Um, and boxing has been my distraction from destruction in many, many, many ways, more, more ways than one, actually. So. Um, I won the New York City Golden Gloves. I grew up rough in New York City with a lack of um, parenting. And um, I walked my way into a boxing gym one day and it changed my life forever. How old were you when you did that? When I walked into a boxing gym? Yeah. Um, about 17 years old, 16, 17. Okay. Yes. yes. That's amazing. T tell us a little bit more about that. You know, growing up, it sounds like you grew up in a really rough neighborhood, you walked in, I mean, what was it about that moment when you walked into that boxing gym? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm always curious about, you know, what changes people and what makes them change their life to mm -hmm. something different. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about that moment. Okay, well, well, that was a great question. So me, for me, my moment was, I wanted a better life than the card that was dealt. And I knew that the only way to do that is if I took control of my life in a positive way because it's very, very easy to get caught up in negative things in New York City, Brooklyn, for sure. So um, I didn't want that life. You know, I wanted a better life. I saw a better life, and um, that's what I wanted to achieve. And I just felt like through boxing, I would be able to get that. I've always had a passion for it, and it's a one-on-one -on -one physical combat sport. Mm -hmm. And um, it didn't require me to go to college because I stopped going to school at an early age, high school at an early age. So boxing was very obtainable as far as being successful, you know, because to be an NBA player, you have to go to D1 college per se. Right. And I'm not that tall. I'm only <laughs> five foot nine, five foot ten. So um, boxing was a realistic uh, avenue that I felt that I could um, capitalize on. So when you decided that boxing was the way that you were going to go, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about like, you know, what were the obstacles in the way? Was was it easy? Were, were you? Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Boxing is, see, you play other sports, you don't play boxing. I mean, you, I mean, you play right. boxing, I mean, you can get really hurt. Right. So um, it wasn't easy at all, um, but I got engulfed in the craft of it, mm -hmm. the art of boxing. Boxing is an art. You know, it taught me discipline. It um, taught me how to appreciate um, the process. Mm -hmm. And boxing is very addicting where, with anything else in life, when you see good results from the work you're putting in, it actually fuels you more. Wow. And um, with doing that, I won the New York City Golden Gloves, um, countless daily newspaper articles in the New, in the New York newspaper. And um, after winning the Golden Gloves and representing New York in the Golden Glove Nationals, I'm like, wow, I think I can make a career out of this. Did you have a mentor that was that somebody that like took you under their wing? Is that kind of what gave you a little bit of guidance? Because you had your grandma. Yep. And it wasn't easy like growing up because no. you weren't always just with her, right? No, I mean, yep. Nope, nope. I uh, was not always with my grandmother. Uh, she was a single grandmother. She took on a role, which I am so appreciative for because without her, I don't know where I'll be. So mentors, I did stumble across in boxing, in, in, in the boxing gyms. I stumbled across mentors like Lonnie Davis, who was like my first trainer. Um, and um, that's, that's, that's the first main mentor. But I also, I'm a sponge and I like to trace other people's amazing accomplishments. So I always try to forge relationships with people that I feel are inspiring. And I would, like a floppy disk, I would download their intelligence. So I like to call myself an intellectual jacker. I like to jack people for the intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened like after the New York? Because I mean, now okay. you live with us in LA. Yes, so after I won the New York City Golden Gloves and represented New York in the Golden Globe Nationals, I understood that boxing is a business more than it is a sport. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, 
So I went to Miami. I'm like, Miami's a good boxing city. New York is as well. But Los Angeles, for the lighter weights, like the featherweights, the lightweights, it's better out west. So I said, you know what? Let me move out to Los Angeles. Um, that's where the lighter weights migrate to. The heavier weights migrate to the east coast. Mm. So um, that's what brought me to Los Angeles. Definitely not the rent amount, that's for sure. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> right, right, right. We right. got a little bit better weather, would you say? Amazing weather, um, amazing weather. So how's it going like right now? You've done some amazing things within the city of Los Angeles. Absolutely. And this is just so not the normal story for right. somebody that's only been here for a couple of years. Okay. Because you haven't been here for a long time in Los Angeles, so it's only been like three years. Right. Right. So how did you even, I'd really like for Alex and the audience mm -hmm. to know your philanthropic background and what you've done and the way you give back, mm -hmm. this is just what made me fall in love with you. Thank and you. that's appreciate why that. I can't even imagine having the show and not having you on this. I appreciate that. So, I, I mean, I'd that. love for you to share your story. Absolutely. So when I moved to Los Angeles, um, the first thing I did was went to Oscar De La Hoya's uh, office downtown LA. and I. Uh, rented a loft downtown LA and I actually made my pro debut under Oscar De La Hoya's pro, uh, promotional banner which was Golden Boy Promotions and I sold $25,000 in tickets in nine days on the Bernard Whoa. Hopkins undercard. I can't yep. even get that many likes on Facebook in one day. <laughs> correct, love, correct. You know, people putting out money. Correct. So basically what I end up doing is after turning pro and having some success and still having success um, I would run downtown LA, I would run at the track, Griffith Park, and I stumbled across a section of uh, Los Angeles called Skid Row. Yeah. And um, me and my grandmother were homeless for a point in time, or we stayed in shelters, etc. So that bothered me, it really, really bothered me to see so many homeless people in one area. And um, I couldn't sleep at night, so I was like, man, I gotta do something, you know? And then I um, used my own capital, I went to the restaurant, Depot, purchased a crap load of food, and it's not a nonprofit organization. I didn't raise any money at all. I wanted to do it myself. So I decided to call it Knockout Hunger. You know, my last <laughs> five fights have been by a first round knockout, so I'm pretty familiar with knockouts. So I said, you know what? You know, this is just unbelievable. What can I do immediately to help? And um, I went to restaurant depots, and I got bulks of food. I have volunteers. And, um, and it's all on my website, claudieboy.com. I edited the videos myself, yeah. so it's on there. So don't judge me, guys. <laughs> no, uh, but I wanted to, th that is really cool. When you go to claudieboy.com, yes. that's also where I was like, oh my God, because yes, yes, we're yes. technology people. Okay. And so like what you did with your videos and stuff, you're, you're you. such a freaking entrepreneur. Thank it's you. insane. Thank you. So keep going. Thank you. So, yep. you so, I, um, so I did my first annual, second annual. I just recently did my third annual as well, Knockout Hunger, um, where I fed thousands, four or 5,000 people at a time. Think about that. I, yeah. I'm actually holding back right now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, this is, I'm so glad, Jen, you didn't tell me his story. Yeah. yeah. Because you wanted to. Yeah. Um, I, my family used to be homeless. Okay. <laughs> and to just sit here and listen to you talk. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're. I mean, I just met you. You're this young, yeah, vivacious kid, and the two of us yeah. coming from where we've come from, yeah. and you helping, yeah. you know, and doing something about the yeah. homelessness yeah. Um, in our city. Mm -hmm. You know, it just goes to show, like yeah. my my aha moment is that anybody, you know, everybody should do their part. You can do Everyone anything. And should. and um, anyways, I just. Um, I, you know, we were talking right before the interview, mm -hmm. and you know, Claude, I was telling you, like, you know, you need to say, you know, I would hope I, I look at you, mm -hmm. and you could be such an inspiration to you know children, right. or millennials, yeah. and yep. and you know, it's somebody who ha had it rough, right. and you know, turn and now you're this you know professional undefeated yeah. boxer. Yeah. And you remembered mm -hmm. where you came from. But and it's not like he's you know? rolling in the dough like right. Floyd or somebody, you right, know what right, I mean? Right. I mean, it's not like you're, right. I'm selling you a house for $10 million up in the hill today, right. you know what I'm not, saying? Not yet. Not yet, no, you <laughs> will. No, I have right, no right. doubt you will. But what I'm saying is you've still gone out and you're feeding four to 5,000 people. Yeah, you know yeah. why? Because I stay true to who I am. Yeah. And I don't allow what the popular thing See? is. You know, that's not who I am. You know, I can only be myself. I can't be anyone else. So when people ask me, why do I give back to the homeless? 
population, why do I go to group homes? I was in a group home when I was 10. There was a point in time my grandmother couldn't take care of me. Yeah. So I go to group oh homes gosh. and I give um, just me cry and so I, um, and like I told you, boxing was my distraction from destruction. So when I go to group homes uh, and to underprivileged schools, I make them write me essays. And the essay topic is, what would you like your distraction from destruction to be? And um, the top 15 essays, usually I buy the Michael Jordans. And um, it's on my website, yes. Yeah, but no, I want to talk about the yeah. way. Don't want to tell about the t sneakers, because you I don't gotta know tell that. you, okay, I'm making yeah. a commitment right now. Okay. The next, like, 50 pairs of Michael Jordans on me. Okay. Are you serious? Okay. <laughs> oh, my, I just got chills you say that. It was that. on me, because, I mean, it's just incredible. I just, I mean, yeah. when you, I mean, I lived away from my parents because they couldn't afford to keep me. Okay. I didn't live in a group home. I lived with my aunt. Okay. And, you know, the feeling of not only, you know, being, then not having a home, but not mm -hmm. having a place to stay, mm -hmm. you yeah. know? So, I yeah. mean, you are such an inspiration. Thank you, I appreciate and that. And tell words. her yeah. how many sneakers that you gave away. I mean, it's on your website, but let yes. Alex know. So, uh, for the first thing you will knock out hunger, I teamed up with a sneaker company, Artelia Arthur. Um, they gave me 100 pairs of sneakers. Uh, it retailed at like 350 bucks, and I handed them out to the homeless people downtown LA, because some of them didn't have shoes on their feet. And um, as far as with the group home, um, Optimus Youth Home and Family Services. It's a 111-year-old nonprofit here in California. And I um, had all the kids write an essay on what their distraction from destruction was. And um, I gave them the top 15 essays, got Michael Jordans. I wanted to show them that, you know, when you do something good, when you put for, forth effort to write an essay or whatever you do, you should be rewarded. And, um, you know, some of those kids just felt, some of their essays was just, I couldn't read them all really at, in one day yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, without being course. stressed right. out. I mean, some of those kids, from what they expressed, some of them have never slept in the bed until they got to the group home. Yeah. You know, I was waiting to talk to, and I've been several occasions, I was waiting to talk to one group of kids, about 75 kids, 100 kids, and I was looking at my phone, and this little kid walked past, and I was looking at something on Instagram probably, and it was the ocean. So he walked past, an eight, nine-year-old kid. And he goes, wow, that sure is a big swimming pool. He didn't even know. So he didn't even know. That oh, that he was. didn't even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wow. stuff like that. So when people ask me, why do, I, why do I do those type of things? My best response is that I'm selfish. And when people say you're mm, selfish, I get it. it's because I like the way I feel when I help and give back to people. So I do as much as that as possible that I can underwrite. And um, yeah, that, I'm going that's with why, you, baby. I'm that's doing why it with you, yeah. my aha moment and my hashtag, besides uh, boxing is my distraction from destruction, is deeper than boxing. It's I'm fighting for more than just to earn money. Um, I'm fighting to take care of my grandmother. I'm fighting to help less fortunate kids and homeless people and I'm fighting to be the best I can be. I'm fighting to be a master of my craft. And um, boxing is 90% mental. It's not really as physical as people think. Yeah, I, 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 Claude, I hear what you're saying with those essays. I, seriously, Jennifer, I think that adults could write essays. Like, what are your distractions yeah. so you don't destruct? I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's so powerful. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, I think you, they're so, you're an inspiration to millennials, to, you know, I have kids and I definitely think that, you know, the, the kids nowadays, there's just so much that's happening, so much that's given. Mm -hmm. And right. I think when, you know, they look at someone like you and what I love, love, love about you is you never forget, where, forgot where right. you came from. No. Listening to your shoe story, I cannot contain myself right now. I mean, I, I have, one of my aha moments mm -hmm. in my life actually involved shoes. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, you know, I, there was a time when my family was homeless. I was about 10 years old and my, fa my parents had sent me to go live with my aunt in Wisconsin. And it was snowing and I was 10 years old and I, you know, had never seen snow before. Mm -hmm. And I remember being so angry mm -hmm. about being home, like not being with my parents, mm -hmm. not having enough and, mm -hmm. you know, being just far away. And my mom would come and I didn't realize that my, my parents were homeless until I saw their truck. And it was a, it was a truck with a camper in the back, mm -hmm. with a mattress in the back. Mm -hmm. 
and my parents would never let me see that mattress because they wouldn't. They shipped me to live with my aunt because they did not want the three little girls or four little girls, my sister was actually homeless with them, to see how bad it had gotten. And me not knowing how bad it was, she had taken me to Payless to buy a pair of Pro Wings. I remember it. It was like a knockoff of Pro Wings. It was a Payless brand Pro Wings. It was pink. Right. And I remember walking out of that store and seeing my mother walking out in front of me. Mm -hmm. She was wearing penny loafers. And I don't know why I didn't notice before, but she was walking out in front of me with the soles of her shoes falling off mm. her feet and I could see her bare foot. Mm. And for me, it was such an emotional moment and mm. aha moment for me mm. because I did not realize, you know, for the mothers now that I'm a mother mm -hmm. and seeing your <laughs> grandmother yeah. and everything yeah. she has sacrificed for you. And yeah. we talk about women and the things that we do for our children. Mm -hmm. And it was that moment that I realized that I had nothing to be angry about. Right. It was about, you know, and I had this gratitude and wanting to do more for my family, yeah. more for my life. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't waste a moment feeling sorry for myself right. anymore. Right. And I grew up. Mm -hmm. I went from 10 years to probably 20 years old yeah. at, that, yeah. at that very moment. Yeah. And um, so this moment mm -hmm. touched me so much because here you are, yeah. you know, yeah. inspiring me to not forget where I came from, mm. and being able to do something about that with a story about, right. oh my goodness. Shoes. I think you just had an aha moment right now because I've heard you say this story a million times. You got me crying. I'm you so know sorry, me. Guys. I'm, I'm so just, sorry. I'm, I'm But I think sorry. this is good for the viewers yeah. to know that, you know, anyone that may watch this that are not in the best place in their life, yeah. that rock bottom is a good foundation to start from. That's yes. it. Yeah. That's yeah. it, because you got nowhere else to go but yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, and you don't let yeah. life break you down, no, and that's you what you're trying to do. You Absolutely. can come back and rise like a phoenix. Absolutely. And that's what makes the characteristics of a man, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, but there are also people, I remember, that helped us along the way. Oh, yeah. Of course. I mean, I remember probably my best Christmas was when I, got, I had always wanted a Barbie doll. Mm -hmm. I remember I wanted a blonde Barbie doll just like you, Jennifer Berman, <laughs> right? And I wanted a Barbie doll, and I could never get a Barbie doll because my parents just could not afford a Barbie doll. Mm -hmm. And I remember one day somebody came over with a bunch of used Barbie dolls, and they didn't have long hair. They had short hair because somebody had cut, cut it off. But I was the happiest. Yeah because someone remembered. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Someone, and I don't know who it was, mm -hmm. it, you know, and it was someone like you mm -hmm. that remembered that these children exist yeah. and that they matter too. Yes. So yeah. thank you for that inspiration. You're how does well. that help? I mean, like, what does that do to you? Because I know someday you're going to have a family, you know? Yes. Now you're going to, like, give back. And it's like, how does that make you feel, like, when you look at these kids in their face? It's like, because I, I work with kids too like mm -hmm. that, and when you leave them, it's like you just want to take oh, them man. all with you. Well, you know what? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Right? Um, but you know what? It's, and I like nice clothes, and <laughs> I drive a nice car, but nothing feels better than giving back. For me. Right. That makes me feel good. Right. It makes me feel good, so it feels amazing. No, We're going to be rooting for you, my Thank you. friend. Thank you. Well, you've got so I'm currently ranked top 20 in the country, so we got to keep well, on. Well, hold on. He's, he, you're, you're, on. you're doing something else that's very different because you are an entrepreneur. Yes. And and this is where, you know, we sat down and talked about it. I just Absolutely. was, like, fascinated by your story on yes. this. Yes. And I want everybody to know exactly you said it earlier. Mm -hmm. You this was more of a business and yes. it wasn't like a sport. Yes. And I want you to dive into that and I okay. want you to like tell the audience and tell Alex exactly what you changed and mm -hmm. what you've done. Okay. Different. Yeah, great, yeah, absolutely. So um when I set out on this journey to be a professional boxer, I you always hear about the fighters that have come before me that blow their fortune. Yeah. They end up in a rough spot in life. And um I never wanted that to be me, considering that I am so, in, I'm so connected to the grind, the shed of the blood, sweat, and tears that it takes to, you know, like a lot of fighters or athletes aren't educated, you know, about finances and et cetera. And everyone, no one wants to be around them. The fake people don't want to be around them when they don't have anything. But um, when it's great, they have a ton of friends. But when it's not good, they don't have little yeah. to no friends. So what I wanted to do with my career is retain as much ownership as possible. 
retain as much ownership as possible and that meant for me owning my career, owning my talent, the talent that I worked so hard to, to you know, earn, to develop. So what I decided to do is I um, decided to stay independent. Um, I decided to learn on the job and I decided to create a company. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna create a company. You know, I'm gonna sell a certain amount of shares and that right there, because boxing, like many other businesses, like real estate, is cash intuitive, obviously. That's right. You can't get nothing without cash, That's unfortunately, it. you know? Um, so I was like, okay, it's cash intuitive. You know, I don't know everything, but I know how I feel about and I know my vision. Right. And as long as you know your vision and you're honestly trucking in that direction, you're going to be okay, you know? You're going to be okay. So what I wanted to do was um, form a company, sell shares, because my thing is, hey, if this cryptocurrency that you can't touch, burn, <laughs> rip, if that, if someone's saying that's worth a certain dollar amount, Dude. why can I say something Dude. that I have tangible proof of? That's it. That's and, true. Yeah. So, so is this not the norm that it's not the norm. Boxer not at all. It's not the norm. Would take would form his own. I mean, it's not the norm. What, what oh. do typical boxers do? They sign with a promoter that uh, usually misuses them, or they like them until the fighter is no longer appealing to them, and wow. then they you know, move on to the next fighter. And, you know, it never works out well for the fighter. So for me, I never understood how, you know, a fighter that's doing all the work gets the smallest piece of the pie wow. and gets disposed of. So for me, it's all about putting myself in a position where I'm indisposable. And the, and the way I could do that is form my own company. And um, Yeah, but you went a step above, baby. Yeah, yeah. You also did some apparel wear. Oh, yeah. I yeah, mean, you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every brand should own That's merchandise. It, man. You have to He's own something. He's just smart. Nobody taught yeah. him this. Yeah. He didn't go to college to do this. No, I'm in ninth grade, so, high school, you know. So, well, on, he's, a, he's not I'm just a boxer, a he's an entrepreneur. <laughs> yes. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just not, like, and I looked at the website, yeah. and I'm like, you, cloudyboy.com, I'm yes. begging you guys to go and yes. do cloudyboy.com. And the merchandise is the merchandise. great quality. The yeah. merchandise is amazing. You I need to really, start sporting some of the and, merchandise. Yes. And you made your own logo. Yes, it's just the my logo's signature. The logo's dope. It's just my signature, and I've got some cool boxing gloves. And it's really classy. And um, but you know what it is? Your brand is you. Yes. Yeah. And if you are, I mean, I, anybody that's watching this, if you are inspired by someone who will always remember where they come from, mm -hmm. will this, and just giving somebody a hand up, yeah. I mean. Yeah. Well, and, it's, and these shares that go in to do this with you, that's what's fascinating to me. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. Well, I'm pulling people together, a pool right now, trying to get investors yeah. to go in for you as well, yeah. because it's not like what people think. Yeah. So to invest in a live human being like you and what you give back, yeah. this is a no-brainer of an investment yeah. to me. Yeah. But, and also so say, it's just not investing in the fight, but it's also in, I mean, in the fighter. In Claude. In Claude. But it's also investing in, in the, the brand. In the in, mission and everything and, that surrounds wow. it. Yeah, it surrounds it. Yeah. It's, it's within the company. Correct. Right. So Correct. that's that's why this is just so severely different. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I thought, I personally thought, you know, at the time when I came up with this idea, I'm like, you know what? You know, it's no such thing as, like in boxing, there's no, for me, you know how some trainers say, oh, he's throwing his punch wrong. He's doing that wrong. For me, I never felt that way. I was like, no. If that fighter is throwing that punch the way he's throwing it, if he's hitting the guy, and if he's not getting hit, how is it wrong? Oh, no, because his elbow is tucked the wrong way. No, there's no such thing as doing the wrong, there's no such thing as the wrong way as long as you're being honest, you're not harming anything or breaking any rules. Right. So, and you know, who is to tell me not that I can't do that? Well, so how come you hit somebody and knock them out in the first ring and row? Right. Why? <laughs> Well, because I throw the punch the right way for me. And because you're <laughs> And the wrong way for him. And you don't want to get hit down. You know what? And that's always something I deal with. People he look at me. Pretty. People look at he me and see these. They look at me and see these teeth and how I look. And it's like, oh, man. But, but I'm really a savage in the ring. I'm very talented and I'm very um, hardworking. And um, I'm up 5 o'clock every morning. But you are a little hot tamale off the ring, yeah, though, baby. Hey, but that's good for the brand, huh? That's good and great for the so brand. I'm, I'm, Several ladies said that I have a million dollar smile. Just let me know where I can go to cash it in. Just let me know where I go to cash in this smile. I see a new sponsorship awesome. with one of the yes. smile oh, companies. Cool game, call us. That'd be good. Speaking of ladies, I have a question for you. Uh -huh. I see the name Eleanor. That's my grandmother. Oh! Yes, it's my grandmother. <laughs> Just gotta take a look at this. It says Eleanor grandma. right on the neck, and yes. I'm sitting here the entire time wondering That's my grandmother. who is Eleanor? That's my grandmother. Who's so Charles? My grandfather, he passed away um, when I was around. Eight nine years old, he got very sick and passed away from prostate cancer. Oh. 
Mm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so he was a great guy. He was an amazing guy. So, Claude, what was your aha moment that you knew that switched this all to professional realm in a business manner? Mm -hmm. What made you do that? Did you see something happen to somebody and know that you need to change that for yourself and you didn't want to go down that road? That's a good question. Um, it actually was a was an accumulation of things that made me come to that uh, decision to be such business savvy with my career. And I think the, uh, the aha moment was, you know, growing up with my grandmother and not being able to have the food I wanted to eat, the clothes I wanted to wear, even to the braces. I think the, uh, the, the aha moment had to be the braces because she wanted to put braces on my teeth, right? And I wanted the pair of Jordans. And I hated her, right? I hated the braces because you get all the, hey Claude, when's the next train leaving? <laughs> So the um, aha moment was bracings of Jordans when I was young and I didn't have control over my grandmother saying, no, you need good teeth because all I wanted was the Jordans to be cool. So when I translate that to my career, the aha moment was, you know what, let's retain as much ownership so I can make the decisions under how I feel I want to make them. And um, boxing is just my vehicle to be able to do that. And to, and, to and, and to create a better life. So poverty, poverty and the lack of having was my biggest aha moment to develop as much as I wanted in my professional life as a grown man and as an athlete. Well, what I hear from that, between the braces and the Jordan uh -huh. that your grandmother so beautifully chose yeah. for you, yeah. is instead of a short term yes. thing, Correct. which are a pair of great really Jordan, nice shoes, that was right. but she invested in your smile. In my smile. Yeah. We just got to give a shout out to Eleanor, man. Eleanor. Because yeah. it's like, but think about this. Like, who taught Eleanor mm -hmm. to be so smart and to be so supportive? I you think, know what I'm saying? I, I mean, think it wasn't so knows. much of the intelligence. It was my teeth looked crazy. <laughs> <laughs> man, she raised a good boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah. it's like how, it's like you got to raise the roof for Eleanor on yes, things. Yes, you yes. know what I mean? Yeah, because she's my biggest her supporter. Love. Yeah. My I mean, supporter. like the braces is something that's la going to last him yes. even after, you know, forever. And investing in yourself and starting, instead of just signing with a promoter right. and, and starting myself. your own business and company, mm -hmm. that's going to last beyond Way longer. your Correct. boxing career. Correct. Correct. Yeah, that Don't, is brilliant. But, just to say about the whole braces story, after every fight, she goes, so, so, so you lucky that you didn't stand in that ring and they knocked the teeth out, because <laughs> then you don't need the braces. That was her investment. <laughs> that was her investment. Like, it, that was her investment. The investment. Yes, that yes. was her investment. Gosh, this is, I think every grandmother hopes to you know, have a grandson like this. I know when I have grands, I mean, this is, has my been- My grandmother is not in full support of my career. After every I fight- No, of after, course I could see, I oh, wouldn't need it oh, oh, she has all my newspaper baby. articles, right? But after every fight, yeah. I call, hey grandma, I won, first round knockout, no big deal. She goes, okay, good. Now you, you okay, now That's it's out it. your system, Claude. <laughs> Let's it. find something else She's to do. She's your baby. <laughs> That's exactly yeah. right. She, I bet you she has a hard time watching. Yeah, she doesn't. I, I, I don't yeah, think I'd, I'd be able watch. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, even as close as I've gotten you, I just, I don't, yeah. it's hard for me because yeah. it's like, no. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you're winning, but it's I like, I can see no. that. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Like, yeah. It will hurt her more than it hurts you yes, if you got yes, punched. Yes. <laughs> so me owning ownership, having ownership of my career and taking this route with company and boxing career. It's going well. I'm ranked top 20 in the country in my weight class, but I have so much work to do and I'm looking forward to doing it. We're really looking forward to watching Thank you, you, that's for sure. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. And, and you know what? We're rooting for you. Thank you. Undefeated and let's keep it that way. That's exactly. it. We don't know nothing else but winning. That's it. We yeah. just know nothing else but winning, awesome. baby boy. That's it. <laughs> and I would also like to say, ladies, the show, the mission of the show, the message of the show, you guys inspired me. Oh. You guys really do. I really do. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we just, we just love you enough, baby. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You. Thank we're you so supporting much. you in all so the charities. So with that, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. And remember, when life throws you for a loop, it's possible for you to rebound and grow. You are stronger and more capable than you realize. So it's time for you to say, aha. If you like what you saw today, please subscribe and like the AHA Show. Done. Done. Perfect. <laughs>